All right, guys, let's move on. I got this all marked off. Get this roof patch made. Um, I went ahead and real quick, I'll show you if I can get up here. Ugh. Cleaned it up oh, my head. Um, yeah, I got it cleaned up, kind of figured out what I'm going to do. If I go up too far, I end up into the vent thing and that'll be kind of a pain. So I'm just going to stay back there and see if I can work it that way. Hoping I can weld into that. Clean it up like this when I do it. Those were bad like that too. And that stripping wheel actually does a really good job of kind of cleaning up the rust areas. Almost like sandblasting it. So It's really nice to use those for some things like that. It's kind of cool. But I'll start making uh, that and I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. All right, so just got it lapped on there like that. So I'm taking my cutoff wheel and I angle it like, like this. I can't film this up here. Angle it like that and cut along the edge. And then I drop it down, push it down with my, use my poker. Push it down a little bit, make sure it's tight and butt weld it. Then I'll just go and fill all these in when I get done. Just keep working my way around. Let's check it out. See where these two metal are not lining up. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll finish this out. See how that's a big gap right there. I'll just keep pushing this down until these butt together. And then when I get done, I'll take a hammer and dolly and just straighten that out and then get it to where they you know can't rub your finger across it. And then weld it wherever it's right, and then just work my way around just doing that. So now I'm using a shrinking hammer and dolly just kind of work in these flat areas where it feels like that and I'll just put a spot weld there and then when I get it all done then I'll just fill in all the areas with weld by just using remember the method if I showed in my other video if you're new um, I go from this piece to the weld to that piece so I make like a C motion to fill in that gap and it fills it in nice and easy with this Harbor Freight welder 110 welder it's, uh, you can hold it on there long enough and with like a 220 welder, you have to just go and that's it. And try and hopefully you hit it. This thing, you get a little bit of time. You can go from one surface to the weld to the other surface and makes it easier. If you have your settings just right. And I go from the inside and remove the piece before I weld it in because sometimes you'll burn through and weld it in really good. So I burned through a couple places, but uh, won't be hard to fix now. Well, let's go ahead and weld that all up. We'll take a look at it. All right, so there we go. Got it all in there. Cut a couple little spots. Cut a little bit off on it, but it will fill in just fine. So I pounded out some of this stuff a bit. A lot of dents underneath the, uh, you know, in this roof, just the, is beat up. I pounded out quite a bit of it. So I got a little low spot right there. Maybe I'll bring that one up a little more. Yeah, this one here is a nasty one. I think I'll use a spot welder on that. I don't know if I can. Looks like I can get a spoon in there. Maybe I'll try a spoon first. It's easier. So I'll do that and we'll start filling some of this in, but I still got to do the drip rail edge. So bunch of different parts of that I'm not gonna do the whole thing but like this part right here is rotten from here back so I'll have to get that maybe I'll get some filler on here so it doesn't rust out or get too far along Just get something on there and get some primer on this or something I don't know yep keep going a little more cleanup 
No more pounding. That's how it goes. Just I still gotta do that one.
Sound right, boy. All right, so I had to make this, and if you notice, it's curved so that it follows the roundness so it'll kick out the right direction because if you just try and put it on there straight it won't do it so what i did is i just cut a strip and then i took the stretcher and stretched that edge a little bit and that's how i made that so that's one of the reasons i bought that thing because i knew i was going to have some stuff like this to fix so and then of course it goes crowns you know it kind of goes up and down and i just grind it straight you know so that's why you always cut it way tall. That's why I did that. Cut it really tall, extra tall. And then once it's welded in, then I'll just grind it down so it's straight. Okay. We'll take a look at that in a little bit.
sound right, boy. Where the roof is looking pretty good just got to do some primer on that uh, and then I'm gonna have to do some more stuff down here I gotta put some filler in here I got to get some epoxy putty out for those little pinholes and you know there's just a few little places here that I need to do and then get the filler on those so um, it's taking me a lot of time I'm gonna end up in a lot more time on this roof than I expected I gotta get this piece of metal out. I've been wiggling that thing for at least an hour or two. I don't know if I can even see it. I'm trying to turn the camera around back here. All oh, right here. That's the mess. This mess. So I gotta figure that out. I'm gonna have to put some clamps on. I'm gonna be pulling on it, twisting it, trying everything I can get to get that stupid piece of metal out. And I can't get it out of there. It's just gonna take me a lot of time. So anyway, I was gonna try and get more of this roof done, but. Just wear that's wearing me out with my hands over my head like that. So that's the way it kind of goes, right? I'm gonna take a break for a while. And I figured I'll just get this video ready right now while I'm taking a break and show you guys more. I got this thing on here off camera again. I just weld the bottom edge, weld here, and then grind it straight. That's how I do it. It comes out pretty good when it's all painted and primed. When it's primed, you kind of take a look at it and you might have to grind a little more. You can see it better. Sometimes you can't see something on the metal and then you go to primer and then some guys try and dress all their metal, make it look just like it's, you know, not there. I don't usually do that. So I do it on primer. So anyway, then I got to still remove a lot of paint here. A lot of little stuff like that I'm going to have to do. Don't really want to get into that right now. My arms are tired from wiggling that stupid thing for a good solid 20 minutes at least. Uh, and I haven't. It feels like it's gotten nowhere, so I don't know how I'm going to get it out of there. I'm going to get it out of there somehow, but it's going to take me a little time. So anyway, that's it for this video, uh, and we'll come back to the roof again, and then I should be able to finish it the next one, get it primered, and then, uh, you know, and then we'll get on to the bed parts. Supposed to be some rain coming, so I'm not going to be able to do those bed things until after the rain. That'll make it interesting, right? Anyway, weather always is an issue because I got to do those outside. Well, I could do them inside, I suppose, but I have to get everything out of here and clean up first. So anyway, I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.